notes for today are an algebra review over solving equations. When I'm solving an algebraic equation, I want to find the value of the variable. In order to do that, I need to undo this equation to get the variable on by itself on one side of the equal sign. So I'm going to draw a line down my equal sign. I'm not going to do this on all of them. I'm just going to do this on the first one. So to, in order to isolate that variable, there's a variable on one side of the equal sign. I need to first get rid of my parentheses. In order to do that, I need to distribute the three into each term inside the parentheses. Three times X is three X. Three times negative four is negative 12 equals 27. Now I'm gonna undo the subtraction. To do that, I'm gonna add 12 to both sides. That undoes it on the left side. I'm left with three X on the left side. 27 plus 12 is 39. Now I'm going to undo this multiplication. We undo operations by doing the inverse operation. So the inverse of multiplication is division. I'm going to divide by what I want to get rid of, which is 3. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other. I'm left with x equals 13. And that's my answer. Now I drew this line down the equal sign because what I like to see is my equal signs lined up all the way down. I'm not gonna do that on any of the other examples. I'm just gonna make sure my equal sign is lined up. It's just good practice. Okay, let's move on to number two. Again, I have a variable on one side of the equal sign. The first thing I'm going to do is get rid of those parentheses. I'm going to distribute a 4 into each term inside the parentheses. 4 times 2a is 8a. 4 times negative 1 is negative 4 equals, and now I'm going to go ahead and combine like terms over here. This is 15 plus 5, so I'm going to get 20. I'm going to undo that subtraction by adding 4. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other. I'm left with 8a on the left equals 20 plus 4 is 24. Next step, I need to undo this 8, multiply by 8. How do I undo it? I divide by 8. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other. I'm left with a equals 3, and that's my answer. Let's move on to problem number 3. In problem number three, this is our first example where we have a variable on both sides of the equal sign. So let's get started. I'm going to distribute the six into each term inside the parentheses here. That'll get rid of my parentheses. So six times two y is 12 y. Six times five is positive 30, so plus 30 minus one equals. Now I'm gonna get rid of the parentheses on this side of the equal sign. I'm going to do that by distributing this one half into each term inside the parentheses. One half times six y is three y. One half times four is two. And now we're going to combine like terms. So 30 and negative one are my like terms on the left side of the equal sign. 30 minus one is 29. So I'm going to rewrite this as 12 y, I'm sorry, plus 29 equals 3y plus 2. Now, because I have a variable on both sides of the equal sign, I need to move this variable to this side of the equal sign. So here's 3y. When I'm moving it across, I'm going to subtract 3y. That'll move it from this side. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other side. Okay, 12y minus 3y is 9y. And I'm actually going to do something at the same time, okay? Likewise, if I move the variable on this side of the equal sign, I'm going to move this one plus 29 to this side. How do I do that? I subtract 29. That'll take it away from this side. Subtract 29. So I have 9y equals 2 minus 29. We're going to use our integer rules. I get negative 27. I just did that there to save a little space. And now let's completely change colors. So now I get, and I'm going to rewrite this up here, okay? 9y equals negative 27. Now I'm going to undo this times 9. I'm going to do that by dividing by 9. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other. 
negative 27 divided by 9 is negative 3. y equals negative 3 is my answer. Let's move on to problem number 4. We are rocking and rolling. Okay, again, another example, variable on both sides. We're going to have, this is multi-step. Okay, so to get rid of the parentheses on the left side, I'm going to distribute this 3 fourths into each term inside the parentheses here. 3 fourths times 8x is 6x. 3 fourths times 20 is 15. Okay, if you don't remember how to multiply fractions, let me show you very, very quickly. 3 fourths times, let's do this 8 right here. 3 fourths times 8 over 1. I'm going to write it as a fraction. I like to pre-simplify, okay, cross-simplify, whatever you want to call it. But I can um, simplify. 4 goes into itself one time. 4 goes into 8 two times. When I multiply fractions, I multiply across and I get 6 over 1, which is just 6, and that's how I got the 6 here. Okay, and you can do the same thing to 3 fourths times 20. Then I'm going to subtract 5. I'm just rewriting this. Now I'm going to distribute this 0.5 or 1 half, however you, whatever you want to call it, 0.5, 5 tenths, 1 half, into each term inside the parentheses over here. 1 half times 2x is just x. And then 1 half times 3 is 1.5. And you can use the decimal version of this, which is 1.5. You can use the improper fraction version, which is 3 over 2, 3 halves. It's just whatever you want at this point. Now we're going to combine like terms on the left side of the equal sign. We have a positive 15 and a negative 5. When I combine those terms, I get 6x plus 10 equals x plus 1.5. And now we're going to move the variable to the same side. Okay, we're going to get it on the same side. So I have an x right here. If you're comfortable putting a 1x there, you can. Okay, if I move this to the other side, I need to subtract 1x. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other. Minus 1x, and I get 5x plus 10 equals 1.5. Now, I need to subtract 10 from both sides of the equal sign. Subtract 10, subtract 10, okay? So negative 10 plus 1.5 is negative 8.5. So now I get 5x equals negative 8.5, okay? So if you don't know how to do 1.5 minus 10, you need to review your integer rules, okay? So because they are different signs, I'm going to subtract them, and then I take the sign of the bigger number, okay? So that's essentially 10 minus 1.5, right? 10 minus 1.5 will give me 8.5, and because 10 is the bigger number, then and that's negative, then my answer is going to be negative. Okay, so if you need to review integer rules, you don't know how to do that, I would suggest doing that. That's, um, I do have a uh, tutorial video over that, and I'll link that um, in the upper right corner. So now what we need to do is we need to divide both sides by 5. So negative 8.5 divided by 5. And I'm going to rewrite my answer over here. Whoops. So this is x equals... Negative 8.5 divided by 5, I know my answer is going to be negative. So now let's do the actual dividing, okay? 8.5 divided by 5. 5 goes into 8 one time. 1 times 5 is 5. Subtract. I get 3. I need to bring down the 5. My decimal right here goes straight up. 5 goes into 35 7 times, and I am done. My answer is negative 1.5. 7. Okay, let's move on. I believe these are, nope, those aren't our last two. We have four more. Okay, number five. m divided by 7 plus 4 equals 8. The first thing I need to do is undo this addition. To do that, I subtract. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other. I'm left with m over 7 equals 8 minus 4 is 4. How do I undo that divided by 7? I multiply by 7. What I do to the one side, I have to do to the other. 
Okay, if I take a variable and divide by 7, then multiply by 7, that undoes the 7. So I'm left with m equals 4 times 7 is 28. Let's move on. Example number 6. Okay, in this example, we have a fraction in front of our variable. Okay, so I'm going to show you what to do there. The first thing I need to do is undo that addition. Right, we undo addition and subtraction first, then we undo multiplication and division. So I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides. I'm left with 4 thirds times x equals 18 minus 6 is 12. Now, how do I undo this 4 thirds? I multiply by the reciprocal. Reciprocal means you flip it, that's 3 fourths. Okay, that undoes that fraction. I'm left with 8 equal, or I'm sorry, x equals. Now I'm going to do 12 times 3 fourths. Let's do that over here. 12 over 1 times 3 over 4. Okay, I'm going to pre simplify this. All right, so 1 or 12 and 4 have a common factor, it's 4. 4 goes into itself one time, 4 goes into 12 three times. That's how I can do that. Okay. Then I just multiply across. 3 times 3 is 9. 1 times 1 is 1. So my answer is 9. x equals 9. All right, let's move on to example number 7. In example number 7, there's a lot of stuff going on here. A lot of fraction stuff. The first, remember, the goal of this is to isolate the variable. Okay, so I want to get x all by itself. It's on the right side in this situation, so I'm going to isolate it on the right side. But this plus one half, that's the first thing I need to do. I need to subtract one half from both sides. That'll take it away over here, and I'll be left with five halves times x equals, okay, what is three fourths minus one half? When I am subtracting fractions or adding fractions, I need to get a common denominator. That denominator will be 3. 3 fourths minus, okay, what is 1 half equal to in terms of fourths? 2 fourths, okay? So 1 half is equal to 2 fourths. I just wrote it here as 2 fourths so that I could have a common denominator. Now I'm just going to subtract my numerators. 3 minus 2 is 1, and you keep the denominator, okay? So I'm left over here with now, one-fourth. One-fourth equals five over two times x, or five halves times x. Now we're back to where we were in problem number six, where I've got a fraction in front of that variable. How do I get rid of it? I multiply by the reciprocal, and I'm going to change colors again. What's the reciprocal of five halves? Two-fifths. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other. That'll undo the fraction on the right and I'm left with x. So now I am doing two-fifths, two-fifths times one-fourth. Okay, we can pre-simplify here again, all right? Two and four share a common factor, that's two. Two goes into itself one time, it goes into four two times, and now when I multiply, I multiply across. One times one is one, five times two is 10, and that is my answer, one-tenth. Okay, let's move on to the last problem, which is problem number eight. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is get rid of the parentheses on the left side of the equal sign. I'm going to do that by distributing a six into both terms inside the parentheses. Six times one half p is three p. Six times negative one is negative six. Okay. Now I'm going to move the variables to one side. I do that by subtracting 2p. I generally like to move the variables to the left side. That's what I generally, that is just what I do. But you could have moved, you could have subtracted 3p and moved that to the other side, but this is what I like to do. So now I'm left with just 1p, and I'm going to write that with the coefficient in front of it. You don't have to, though. And now I'm going to move this minus 6 or I'm going to move my constants to the other side. How do I do that? I add 6. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So 1p is just p equals 3 plus 6 is 9. And that concludes your notes 
over an algebra review of solving algebraic equations. I hope it was helpful. Thank <laughs> you.